Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, you are not Shane Beaver. We're going to talk about that today on Locked On Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. On today's show, I want to say we have a new sponsor, which is always exciting. Swing for the Fences on Sleeper Picks, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app, use the promo code Locked On, you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms, conditions, supply. See the Sleeper terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. If there's any weird noise in the background, um, it makes it sound a little bit like the Tolbo scene in Godfather. No, Sonny Corner the Owen is not meeting his end. It is just fireworks uh, where I am in Milwaukee, where there has not been a ton of fireworks this in today's baseball game, which is currently in the 10th innings we're recording. Let's be transparent. Not... I mean, they had offense. We had what? Hey, Ahmed home Ahmed run. Rosario hit his first home run in like a second home a run lefty. of the year. A lefty. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. He is the best. He is better than, you know, Luplo Geyer. He is the best platoon left-handed bat we have had on this team in a very, very long time. Unfortunately, he's not That's used fair. that way. There, he's hey, he's hey. an awesome left-handed killer. Like, he should be – having him hit two against lefties is exactly the right call, and he was that today. And uh, for my our listener who hates when I say it, it's like if I were to go back and do my three stars, he would be one of them. It, you know, it's, it's very easy to do that right now. To uh, be fair, there were some fireworks on – Monday's game. The I don't know if you knew this, Jeff, but the uh, whoever sets the fireworks off. Oh, the what game, a throw by straw! That's game, huge. Tied. huge. Um, cut there him. was uh It was uh, yeah. I cut him. Um, Michael Harris hit a home run off of Gavin Williams on Monday, and the the guy who sets the fireworks off at the Guardians game set a firework off of Michael Harris's first home run. <laughs> so there were fireworks Monday mm-hmm. night. Just saying, and then uh, I'm trying to think now uh, with the uh, our opener. I think I did I have it backwards. I said, fool me once, shame on me. I think it's fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And then fool me three fool times, me. won't get fooled again. Uh, no, yeah. that was, that was <laughs> Not, a, a the Braves Bush won't. Comment. Yeah, the Braves uh, won't. Yeah, what else? Uh, but uh, no, to, to go back and do it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I thought, listen, Gavin Williams. It, it was not as bad of a game as the statistics kind of look like on yeah. paper. As you point out, it was just two bad pitches. And he, one of those home runs was on a good pitch. But that is exactly the difference between the Royals and the Braves. The best and the worst, right. uh, that gap. It's like when you're facing the Royals, you can have, you can throw bad pitches and they don't take advantage of it. When you face a team like the, the Braves, Michael Harris would be one of our three best hitters. He's hitting ninth for them. This lineup is unflipping believable. Uh, and you know, this is a very good team. Like to me, Braves Rays, that's the world series. Like that is what I'm expecting a hundred percent. Like those are the top two teams in baseball. And you know, it, I will take winning one out of three games. Honestly, this Braves team is really, really good. And Cleveland's not throwing their best pitcher Tanner by being this series. So I will easily take one out of three. Um, but yeah, I, you know, again, I don't want to seem like it was negative on Gavin Williams. I just think it shows that difference between the really good and the really bad. And you don't have as much leeway as much you can get away with. Uh, again, giving credit to Ahmed. And then listen, Miles Straw, it looks like his uh, hit streak is going to come to an end in this one. But he might have just potentially saved this with that throw. I'm going to, unfortunately, I see that I'm getting one bar. So I'm going to turn off my game because I don't want to do bad uh, production. So. Hopefully I'm not cutting out, or if I was cutting out, uh, that will I'll end. keep you updated if I can. Um, but, I want to point out, too, that David Fry was catching when that throw from Straw came home. So super impressive for him, you know, a guy who was not asked to catch a whole lot to be, uh, even though he is, you know, quote-unquote a catcher. I don't know if he can – can you consider David Fry a catcher, considering and, how little they actually catch him? I think he's like a yeah. he's like a utility guy that also yeah. catches instead of being a catcher. catcher. Yeah, so good good on him to be there for the tag and make that, that tag at home plate uh, as well. Yeah, Gavin Gavin was fine Monday, two bad pitches. Uh, Michael Harris, give him credit for hitting that one. I, I disagree, though, on saying taking one or three is okay. This is a team that everybody expected and they and that themselves expected. They expected them themselves to be good this year after what – I mean, they obviously every year these guys should be expecting themselves to be good because that's – 
you know, how you function as an athlete. If you don't think you can win, then I mean, I guess unless you're the Oakland A's, I don't know. But this is a team that we expected coming into the year to be a good team. At some point, if they're going to actually get somewhere this year, they can't just get by and say, well, we were good enough to win the AL Central. So we're going to hang our banner up and be happy with that. Because let's be honest, they're not happy with that. There's no way that they're okay with that. In, in the clubhouse, in the front office, the coaches. No, and, I, and I agree with that. Oh. I just, this particular series is one I don't expect to go well. No, I don't, I don't think, given how things have gone this year, we expect them to sweep or take two of three at all. Absolutely. But you did have Gavin Williams, who had stuff to compete against this Braves lineup, and he did. He kept them in the game. Hey, he got into the seventh inning. This is a guy who's had a hard time throwing a lot of strikes in a couple of outings so far. So for him to go out and throw enough strikes to get into the seventh inning, especially when their bullpen got torched over the weekend in, in um, Chicago, at least on Sunday. That was a huge thing. And then you had Bieber today on, on Tuesday, and he was, you know, I don't know, okay through four innings. He kept them scoreless. So I feel like those are two games you should expect to be. And, and to be fair, they were in both games. They were in the game on Monday, even though they lost. They had a chance to win. Um, and Tuesday, you know, we're sitting. They out hit Atlanta on that one. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I love this quote from Pete. I hope everybody else saw this. Uh, his quote, hey, we out here. We hit the Braves on Monday, but they're hitting this one a little farther. What happens when the Braves' worst hitter hits two home runs in the game against you, uh, and their Eddie Rosario has more home runs than Jose Ramirez, and you have a lineup of Guardians who has to combine, like, 20 homers. So, yeah, no wonder that those hits are going to go further because they have actual hitters – who hit for power? I said in my lockdown now on Monday. I said, "Wow, the and this is not you know, not draw because draw has had a couple of good hits recently, but it, it also is because Michael Harris had two home runs on Monday, and Miles Straw hasn't hit a home run in two years. Like that's what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, they're good. Their hits are going like, to go harder than you. It's just the team in general. Like you know, jo- Josh Bell has been in kind of a deep hole of a funk. You know, Will Brennan's been a little bit of a funk of like this team is kind of re-entering that that bad funkalicious state um Gabbiari even bo naylor after that big game it's been a, a struggle it's what gabbiarius can't bunt he tried to bunt for no. a hit on monday didn't go well and you know now he's bunting into a double play which yeah, uh, that i don't great. it's the worst possible thing because he how many times has he bunted his career he is a power hitter he's not and a he's facing player. a right hander for once yeah. Just swing away. It's it's a terrible yeah, decision really, all around. That really hurt. Um, but yeah, it's you know. It, but I will say this: going into this game specifically, uh, today's I you know having Fry in right field, it's not ideal. But like I like having him in the bat up there against a lefty. I, I liked a lot of lineup construction. Getting Freeman in there versus a lefty, running wild. You know, you and I were discussing uh darno before the game it's like he's got bad pop times and his just a little bit below league average and throwing this is a fast team i mean david fry stole a base you had what five four total stolen bases jimenez freeman fry Quan. those are they did a lot of really good things in here um i mean they're up to eight steals in the month of july already which is a yeah. uh, huge what do they have in the month of june like did they have eight steals all of june I feel like it was like 12 was what popped in my head, but that could be wrong. Was it? Okay, uh, we're already off to a better start yeah. at least. And like trying, to hit the, trying to run. You know, we'll have to see how this Good goes. Where, right. Yeah, it's going to be Josh Naylor, um, you know, with his health. It's, it's a big sink on this lineup right now. Um, yeah. the, you know, we, we'll see how they're going to make up for that. But, you know, we're, we're sitting here in extra innings. And, you know, it's just the fact that they are so intentional in how they're, you know, Jose Ramirez, intentional walk. Andres Jimenez, intentional walk. Game Uh, over. David Fry is the game winner. He's going to. How about that? David Fry. (laughs) Against the righty, against Razzo Iglesias, who hasn't (laughs) been a fantastic show. Wow, what a a game for him. Like, he's, okay, there's one of your three stars uh, between, like you said, astutely giving him credit. Like, great throw by straw, great job by Fry. Uh, being in the right spot, making that, getting getting the disrespect of the intentional walk, and then coming through with the hit. Like, you know, you and I discussed him. This team is so the, weird. <laughs> it, it is, but like David Fry, let let's you know take the second and like you and I were both like he could make sense at the as a bench bat, and I think we're seeing that like specifically in this role of hitting lefties and being versatile. Like two hits today, a stolen base, the game winning hit, and the tag at home. 
he's one of the most important players in this game. Um, it, it's it is yeah, nice for a guy who is not asked to catch to be to be to be playing yeah. catcher in a spot like that when the game was on the line to make that play. Obviously, Straw made a great throw, but to be yeah. in that spot in the, in that in this game, and how many and interferences have we seen in that exact situation this year? As that rule is the pass interference of of the MLB, where yeah. no one seems to know. Like you should almost always review it because it feels like every call they're getting someone for blocking the plate. And, you know, he lined up, he took care of business. The guardians took care of business. Uh, you know, I'll take one and one through two games. We can debate the rest of it. We should probably take our first break here though. And then jump back in, talk about these games a little bit more and talk about Shane Bieber. We got a new sponsor. You know I love it when we get a new sponsor. Sleeper app. Uh, many people are probably already very familiar with Sleeper. Uh, when we added it as a sponsor, there were multiple people in chat being like, hey, this is exciting. It's a sponsor I know. It's a sponsor I use. Uh, right now, you can win up to 100 times payouts, the highest payouts uh, out there for this type of app and uh, contests. You can play place in-game contests. There's more stat go stat categories to place contests on. Home runs, triples, stolen bases, and dynamic payouts are live. Dynamic, what is a dynamic play payout? In short, each player projection now has a multiplier attached to it as opposed to preset multipliers based on the number of legs in a contest. With dynamic payouts also come stat categories to place contests on, so you can get a higher payout than other apps with less picks. Built-in group chat function functionality where you can see and copy your group's picks with the tap of a button. Entries can be made in 30 seconds or less. It's easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. Currently operational over 30 states. Use the promo code locked on, and you can get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Justin, I got you muted. <laughs> I was so excited. I was yelling into the microphone. Let's go. No, um, could have taken David Fry and, and Sleeper and gotten some yeah. points for him today. Um, Guardians and, and Braves finish up the series on Wednesday at 7-10. Cal Quantrill and uh, I don't know who's going Soraka, to Soraka, right? right? Isn't it Mike, Mike Soraka? Soraka. Yeah. Soraka. That's right. Uh, listen to Tom Hamilton on the home broadcast on Sirius XM. Just search Guardians on your XM app. Yeah, it's uh, a yeah, so, chance to win the series against the Braves, which would be, like I said, I was happy short. with one win. I know. Uh, but then, like, this is two pitchers that are struggling. So this is a who knows tomorrow. Yeah. Matchup. Well, OK. And and the, and I guess ironically, too, they're both coming off of injuries like Soroka for, for different if differently for years. He's, Remember, like two years ago when he looked awesome, like. That's why you always got to be worried about pitchers and, and injuries. Always. Well, well his was a multiple uh, Achilles, yeah. which is a really rare, I should say. So, but yeah, tra tra obviously Quantrill coming off of uh, a shoulder issue and his start uh, against the Cubs was pretty awful. So this is not a great lineup for him to be facing. So, you know, anything can happen. David Fry can hit a walk off and have a great play at, at the plate too. So uh, any, any of these things can happen. And Jeff's you know happy already because he just said that he was okay with one out of three. Yeah. So Jeff's already. Well, what's happy. kind so, of funny though is does Fry's hits because I couldn't watch it. I had to see the update because again I wanted to make sure we gave a good broadcast here. Uh, did the <laughs> the bunt DP end up hurting like, or helping? Like would Fry's single have scored him if he wasn't at third? Like not again, it's the wrong call and play, but in the where with that fell, I wonder if like at the end of the day, did it actually help them for as much as, you know, baseball is a weird game where the, wrong oh, the, thing... the runner got to third. So third, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered if, if it I wouldn't mean... matter. It's a fry. He would have, um, cause it was Rosario, right? So he just scored. Yeah. Rosario was on hit. third, so it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, it's he, he drove uh, it pretty good to left field okay. off a right hander. So good for good for David Fry. Fry. Um, and you know, the other thing too, honestly, just going back to yesterday's game real quickly, Bryce Elder, um, the side stats are terrible. It doesn't make a lot of sense for he's been as good as he ha has been. Uh, I think his average fastball velocity is in the 80s, but he is exactly what Cleveland struggles horribly against. So I was not surprised to see them uh struggle to get runs on the board oh, again eight hits and three walks 11 base runners is a good amount of opportunities that should lead you to three to four runs unfortunately it was only two today yes uh class a gave up a home run on what almost looked like a check swing to ozzy albies apparently the braves have to have someone hit two home runs in every game in this series 
Uh, Albies is a monster. But uh, are, are you concerned with Kase? That's three poor outings in a row after an utterly dominant month. Of the June. No, I'm not because that's going to happen throughout the course of the year. I mean, look, Emmanuel Kase is not as dominant this year as he was a year ago. I think that's evidently true. Uh, evidence would say so. He's not not striking. I mean, his strikeouts weren't super high last year, but they're also not. They're also down from that. His control has been a little bit off, and uh, some weirder things have been happening this year too. I mean, look, the the Cubs game. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's his fault either because he wasn't under control in the Cubs game by any means necessary. But <laughs> those two plays, if Josh Taylor makes one of those plays, that he gets out of that game, and he still got the quote unquote win. I know that's you know crap, but. I'll still, I mean, he gave some runs in that game too. So he's a little at fault there, but I will say that the, the Josh Taylor place kind of messed with him and I'm not too worried at all. Trevor Steffen had a nice bounce back. I, he did let a runner on and then he got a double play and then he got a Cunha out, which was good. So if Trevor Steffen can rebound, I'm pretty confident in Emmanuel Class they will. It, it could just be overuse. I know, I know the velocity doesn't say it is because he's, he's regularly hitting 99 and 100 again, but you know, he's pitched a lot. This is like his 44th game out of 80. 84 or something like yeah, he is at an absurd amount. Yeah. So it's just, you know, he's been used a lot and it's not going to get any better because he's going to the all-star game. So uh, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't know. What's the concern meter here for doing a one to 10. I'll give it like a three. I'll say like, it could be inching to- forward, but right now I'm not going to freak out about it. it. This happens to relievers. And what do we always say? Bullpens are never as good year to year. Yeah, no, there's always ups and downs, and at the end of the day, they still have. I know people probably get tired of, of hearing it, but it's the second best bullpen ERA in baseball by a significant margin over the Braves. Yeah, you it's, know, it's it's the it's the kicker or the the kicker and the long snapper thing. Like you always yeah. get mad when they blow a game, and, and sometimes these things go in bunches too. Like sometimes you struggle with command, or you struggle because you're tired and overworked, and they're in so many close games this year. You know, so when the kicker, the long snapper does something bad and they cost them the game, everybody notices. But when the long snapper gets that snap off or the offensive lineman makes that block, nobody's looking at him. They're looking at the play because he made the block. So um, he'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, should we talk don't need about... to pick him as much in the second half, hopefully. Yeah. But I don't see that changing, though. I don't see this team winning by four runs regularly where they don't have to pitch him. No, I agree. It's going to be a lot of him, and hopefully it doesn't lead to his arm falling off. Shane Bieber. So you talked about it in your cold open. I talked about it here that he can't get thirds. You had a great tweet with a great stat. I don't know if you have that pulled up. Uh, but, yeah, uh, needless to say, Shane Bieber can't get – and we talked about how many times on this show. He can't get through the order three times anymore. And I don't know if it's – you know, I, I, I did some, like, armchair pitching coaching, and it's that concern of, like, after his – health issue where you know he didn't get surgery and came back and pitched one game and then hasn't really had that curveball that used to be a dynamic pitch for him it's like he he feels like he lacks a third pitch to get himself through the order again and right now he can't get through the order more than twice yeah the stats are what they are i mean this has been a trend for him this year we've noticed it throughout the last couple of starts what it was at the milwaukee start the diamondback start the last start against Kansas city, even Wasn't right there. A, was it Boston was really good or Boston also had an implosion. I can't remember. No, I'd have to go look at his game logs again I'll, and I'll double check, but yeah, it's been a trend the last couple of times out. It's, that he's it's the time. last three pitching and it's four out of his last five where he's third time through the order. It's, it's coming down for him. Yeah. So it's a, it's a two nineteen FIP for the first time to the order four twenty four second time. 564 the third time through. And if you want to go by ERA, uh, it's not much better. It's uh, 268, great. 208, great. And the ERA is lower than the fifth of the second time through. Third time through, 586 ERA. And what did I say it was? The FIP was uh, 564, it. so it's yeah. pretty even. So, yeah, mm-hmm. he just doesn't do well the, the last time through the order. He misses the strikeout rate is what's, what's kind of amazing. The strikeout rate, the first time through the order is 24%. After that, it dips down into the teens the rest of the way. So it's like he's got the stuff to miss bats one through nine the first time. And then after that, he's kind of like, I think that you're right. That could be a, a three pitch thing. Like the four seam, he uses it a lot to steal strikes. And, and because he can paint corners with it so well, 
He often gets called third strikes like that, and guys not expecting 0-2 fastballs. The cutter is great to righties. He can run into lefties sometimes. The slider is kind of his pitch to righties as well, running away. And the curve can be good to lefties as well, and he has sort of been better with the curve recently, I will say. Like, we're seeing it a little more. It's looking like he's getting it was like the quick. Today it was the knuckle curve in Savant is what they were calling it. It wasn't even like a full it's always, No, it's always been a knuckle curve. That's all it's always, it always been. been. But like today, it didn't. It was not. I mean, the data on it was a little bit off. I felt like maybe. I'm... Yeah, it's it's. He's really throwing three pitches, and the cutter and the slider are just so. Yeah. You know, they the cutter is just for him to get a guy's off his fastball, and it, it's a good pitch for him. It's just, it is weird. Yeah, he is kind of a two times to the order guy right now, and I know some people on Twitter were saying, well, "Why'd you leave him out there?" It's like, well, you're also not going to take Shane Bieber out in the fifth inning of a game that's you're winning. Like, you just can't do that. Right, because you're facing the Braves, you can't go to the you can't go to the bullpen in the fifth inning against the Braves and uh, expect to ride this one out. And you're also not going to do that to the to your quote unquote ace either. As as much as like if it was the seventh inning and he was at like a hundred pitches, I would say yeah, he shouldn't go out there. But he was in the fifth inning. His fastball actually has more spin this year, but he's not. But he's also the other interesting thing is his his walk percentage you know he's struggling with that he's everything's getting hit hard like you go look at his sliders uh not the pitch or the little burgers but his sliders on savant and you can just see it's like all of a sudden this is i mean he got hard hit a year ago like that's not uncommon but it's it's all the other things he didn't give up as many hits he was striking guys out and it's that lack of strikeouts tonight he was wild though this was a career high for him in walks and i mean he was consistently missing the zone um i felt like he was touching his hat after every pitch, uh, not implying anything. I just, it could have been idiosyncratic. His, it could have been, head. yeah, it, yeah, was, it, it just was felt weird. like, you know, he, cause, uh, and I even, yeah, yes. It did make me go look at spin data, nothing crazy in today's game and spin data. Mm-hmm. Like some pitches were up, some pitches were down. So I don't think it was anything with like Vaseline or the like, but I think it just felt like thinking, a guy who's jittery. And, and I, you can't even say like, Oh, he's got a better grip on the ball. He's not walking too many guys. They still walked four. Yeah. So, I, th- really, if, if there was anything, nothing really happened no, from it that would've, you would have said would have helped him. Uh, I got one question I want to ask you about Beaver, and I want to talk about quote unquote rumors that are out there or not out there uh, in just a second as we get into the last part of this conversation. Search Guardians on your XM app on Wednesday to listen to the finale of Guardians Braves at 710. Listen to Tom Hamilton call Cal Quantrill versus Mike Soroka. But before you okay. give me your question, I got I to gotta point this out. The most similar pitchers to Shane Bieber this year by Baseball Savant, Jordan yeah, Montgomery like this year, Mashiro Tanaka in 2018. It's okay if you don't remember him. Uh, Alex Wood last year, Zach Greinke in 2018, and Diego Castilla in 2021 a reliever that's weird yeah that's i I mean he's got some he is not uh it's not going well that's and i've seen a lot of people like oh the guardians missed their trade window a they didn't and b you weren't like let's not be ridiculous here like you're not gonna trade him in the offseason when you're coming off of um you know uh being a game away from the alcs and a young team in ascending, you're not trading Shane Bieber. So let's just, that's a silly narrative. It is. It is a silly narrative. And we, I mean, we still said, yes, the, the timeline doesn't really match up to trading before. And I know the guardians have always been good about trading guys before things kind of fall apart. You know, Clevenger, Kluber, Bauer, Bauer is a, a special case anyway, but you know, they are usually good about that. And, and look, the value for Shane Bieber based on how he's pitching is not going to be what it was after last season. Absolutely. If they, if, if they would have traded him in this past winter, which like Jeff said, is crazy. The value would have been peak. Well, I don't know. Yeah. And I guess peak would have been before the injury. Um, yeah. He's just never quite, but, you know, you weren't going to do that either. So, yeah. but as far as after the injury peak would have been over the off season, but the guardians don't do it that far in advance. It's always, guys like that are a year away from, from being a free agent anyway. And <laughs> you're not going to, you know, you're not going to recoup the value that you're, you're want at that time. And they weren't in position to do it anyway. Like they didn't have, 
like the reason they traded Bauer when they did and Kluber when they did is because they had, you know, an emerging group of pitchers they believed in. And that's changed a little bit now, at least from the guys that that, that group consisted of. But now you do have a group of pitchers emerging and, <laughs> you know, there is a little bit of a uh, worry that behind that group, there is not a whole lot more that exists, but we'll see the draft is coming up and the guardians do tend to turn guys pitchers around out of nowhere. So there's always a chance they can do that, but yeah, I still think we both believe he's going to be gone this winter anyway, but it doesn't probably make sense to trade him right now. And I saw John Morosi who I, I really like John Morosi a ton. So I'm not knocking him here because this guy is, is bilingual and he's done a lot of good TV interviews over the years. As far as like stirring up, you know, trade talk, there was a talk, a rumor the other day about, oh, the Guardians may not be apt to trade Shane Bieber because they're 16 and 13 in the last 29 games. That's the second best record in that stretch. My first thought was, wow, 16 and 13 is not a great record. So the rest of the league has really cooled off. That's the second best. And, and then secondly, I, I can't figure out what this team is going to do. I just can't because night to night, you never know what, they're going to do. I mean, David Fry just had a walk off hit for God's sakes. Like, <laughs> off a righty. Off a righty. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know if I necessarily believe they're going to bring in an outside hitter unless they find a, a trade partner finally that's going to give them what they're looking for in terms of like trading like Rokio or I, I don't even know. They, they can't really trade a pitcher. Like, the only guys you can really trade is Joey Cantillo and Cody Morris. And even that to me seems a little bit dicey right now. You don't really have a lot of prospects to go out there and move, do you? So not with I, all I, the, as much as people want to tell me that I'm wrong. It's like a lot of guys have fallen back. You can just go and look at the, the league leader or the, the, whenever, you know, guardians insider tweets out like the team leaders and you look at those stats, and you're like, y- yikes. Like you, you expect better performances at the top. And let's also be real about that as well scouts like if you're looking at stats and, and and outward performance and and production like scouts aren't going to look at that and be like oh this guy like they're not looking at stats they're looking at underlying data and trusting the guys who see these players so like stats don't always tell the true story of, of prospects in the minors especially yes true double a so and sometimes i don't think a bad year from like an angel Martinez or, or whoever else you want to point to in the minors. That's kind of having a a down year is not going to necessarily, you know, say a team is not interested in a player. What they will say is, Hey, we're, we see these flaws that we've seen before. Now they're sort of playing out uh, um, in games and we're not going to value them as highly, highly as we did before. So it's not as if, well, this guy's untradeable. You can't trade angel Martinez for a prospect or a, a a bat now. And this is just an example. It's not a, you know, specific thing. Those teams are just going to not value that player as high because they're seeing whatever their, their scouts are seeing. And it may, it may vary from team to team, but I I still have doubts that they're going to find a team to give them what they want. And I don't see them getting what they want for Shane Bieber as well, unless they get creative in like a three team trade, which is also hard to do, but they've done it before. But I also, they're in contention. Like, why would you trade Bieber? especially when we're still waiting on McKenzie, which we're going to get to in, in a minute. Yeah, no, I think they're not trading him. Let's just be honest and probably move on from that. Like he, they, they can't afford to. I don't think they can, but it's just like, they're going to hang around long enough not to do it. And I don't think they're going to get the offers they want. And and we hear it all the time about how they never get the offers they want. So that's why they don't mm-hmm. make moves. Right. So I don't know. Like, I guess my whole point here is I just don't know what this team's going to do. I can't predict it. I don't, I don't think you're going to see a big trade for a bat unless they find a partner and, and who's, who's selling. Like we, we could have this conversation later in the week, but I really want to know not, we don't have to do it right now because we don't have time, but really got to know realistically who is selling that you can buy from that makes sense. Um, Tristan McKenzie, they're going to wait on him in a couple weeks, shut him down and see how he, he pro- is progressing. <sighs> is this I don't love that. Somebody? Has this ever no. worked? No, it never has. I don't love this. I don't like it at all. I like nothing about it. You know, get it taken care of. I, I understand the idea is, okay, if he needs Tommy John, then you're losing him for a, a year and then it takes another year for command to come back. So that's an issue, 100%. I get that. But at the same time, um, you know, he's never been the same. You know, like it, Bieber has never quite been the same since he did this. And that scares me. 
Yeah, I can I can agree for to an extent about not getting surgery for Shane Bieber because it's a totally different calculus when you have shoulder surgery as a pitcher than Tommy John. Like Tommy John, there is a mountain of evidence about guys coming back. And yeah, it takes time. And I feel bad for McKenzie because he's worked so hard to come back from injuries in the past and he's a talented pitcher and this could be a long recovery for him. Shoulder surgeries are, are a little more significant and there's less like good data on that as we know with the Daniel Espino situation. So I can understand avoiding surgery there for Beaver as much as maybe, like you said, he hasn't been the same since the injury the thing with McKenzie though. You're push if you're, if it is Tommy John, you're pushing it back. What three more weeks to see how he feels yeah. before he starts the throwing program. If he comes back and then starts that throwing program and they say, Hey, not working. You're going to need Tommy John. You're talking like, okay, he gets Tommy John in August. He is out all of next season. Again, if he go, if he went and got this Tommy John, like next week, you can get him back by next year. And and like you said, the the command might not be good and he's still working back. But in theory, if he would have gotten Tommy John, like when this happened, which it's been a month now, right? Yeah. Like middle of June, maybe middle of June. Mm, a little bit back... late in June, right? He came back and got those two starts because he couldn't come back right away in June, and he had the two starts. So it was like end of June. It's he been got you scratched. Know, he got scratched against Arizona. It feels like around the twentieth, you know, twenty twenty first. The seventeenth, he got scratched from his start against the, okay. the Diamondbacks for Tukey. So by the next week, he probably had information. I would say on the twenty fourth. So you're talking like, okay, let's say he decides to get the surgery before the end of June at that point, or maybe the first, maybe this week. You could still theoretically get him back next August. If he doesn't have Tommy John until August of this year, the way he gets, the way this is pushing, like you're talking about maybe at best September next year. And even then he's probably a reliever or he's just rehabbing. Like there's a good chance you don't have him at all next year in the major leagues, which might be best case scenario for him because then he gets all of next year plus next winter to rehab. It comes back April of 2024 or 2025, I should say, with a lot of time in between. That's good, but you miss them all of next year. So I, I don't understand why they're delaying it here. And maybe they'll get lucky and he won't need it. It worked for Masahiro Tanaka, like you just talked about, the similarities. Tan- Tanaka didn't need it. He rested and he came back. So that's one good example, but it's one of few that I remember. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I I don't have a lot of positive feelings about it. Uh, Just like I said, due to recent examples, um, should we talk Josh Naylor? Yeah, real quick. uh, Naylor has some swellness, swellness. It's not swell, Uh, swelling. Anything but swellness. Anything but swell. His right wrist has some swelling on his day-to-day. It sounds like he'll be okay. Um, You know, get him some rest here, get him the all-star break, and then hopefully he comes back the next half and, gets back to being who he was because he's been the guardian's second best hitter and clearly they can't afford to be without him even though they did win on tuesday night out of all weird things i really wanted to get to some more draft talk but we don't really have time today so either we can do a bonus or you can check us out later in the week and we'll definitely get to it because there is a lot of draft stuff to talk about right now no great we got i mean We'll be having a super pack show very soon for that on draft night. Uh, a lot of things on the YouTube side, but we can go a bit longer. Uh, we'll do we have plans yet? Can, can we, do we, can we announce that yet? Or do we have plans? Concrete um, yet? Yeah, I think we can probably, so I'm going to be doing the, the, the show on uh, with Lindsay, our draft show, quote unquote, which is going to be like 30 to 40 minutes. It's not going to be like back when I did it with um, RM, where we did like a three hour show. Uh, we just don't have those capabilities right now. So instead uh, on draft night, uh, we are going to be streaming here. And then if I have, when I have to go do the other show, when I get to go do the other show, uh, I will jump over there and then I'll come back to the stream here. And it's just going to be a night I'll of stream. You know, I'll and be here. Justin's so going to be holding down the whole time. Then he might jump out for um, for the, comp- the, whenever there's some conferences, whenever they, you know, they do the, the talk about I'll the be- pick. That'll be the end of the night when the yeah, Guardians and then, come on at like midnight to talk about their yeah. first two picks. And then uh, we'll figure out exactly what we'll do for the show itself. Like maybe before then we'll cut it off and do like a little mini show there before that um, discussing the picks. You know, they're not going to be are they Sunday? They will be playing. So it'll be a game as well. But um, we'll have honest. the normal podcast on Sunday about that. It's just a question of the draft. But you we'll can probably expect- have a lot of it. It's probably gonna be a little bit on that. And then one segment. 
on the game than two segments on the three players the Guardians had that day. Yeah, at some point on on Sunday or Monday. Yeah, uh, I would think we'll probably still knock that out on Sunday because people are going to want to know all about those guys for Monday. Yeah, it might be two. It might even be two different podcasts. I don't know. You might yeah. get an extra podcast. Yeah, you might have one where it's like Justin talking about the games, the weekend, and the postseason, and you might have one of me doing picks. So you might end up yeah. with a double, but we have stuff set up. We'll be there. Uh, also, yeah. I want to ask real quick, too, if anybody's interested, since Twitter has been kind of a mess the last week or so, and who knows when it's going to end. Uh, so Lockdown, Lockdown has created a, t- uh, a team account as far as uh, hosts and, and personnel talking in Discord. If you are interested in the Lockdown Guardians Discord to maybe communicate with us a little more directly and just kind of post with other fans and, um, you know, not miss things on if you're not on Twitter or if Twitter keeps breaking, let us know. We, we can create that. If you are if you think you would participate semi-regularly in a Discord or want updates there on the Guardians, um, well, you know, I can create that. So uh, hit us in the comments, hit me on Twitter or um, I might even throw my email address in here one of these days since uh, or you can comment are, below. Yeah. The comments are always good, but yeah. uh, yep. Nope. Another good idea. I want to thank you all for being part of the lockdown guardians team. Uh, nice win today. A fantastic competition. Good uh, guy. David sure, Fry. Good guy. David Fry. Make sure you are downloading daily listening, subscribing, liking all that jazz and go, go guardians. Go.